Everybody in the club getting fuzzled. Come out with your hands up. We do have you surrounded. This is the Fuzzies, kindly provided to us by CMYK Games, previously known as Palm Court, aka the people who made Monikers and Wavelength. Irritatingly a team that keep making such wonderful stuff that I feel deeply compelled to cover it and have to give you this caveat. We've worked with this team on Monikers doing an expansion, which means should you trust our judgement on these people's games? Uh, that's up to you, but you need to know that because it's a crucial thing and knowledge is power. Without further ado though, let's continue into the land of the fuzz. As you probably know by now, uh, shall I sit down? We really cannot resist any game which looks like it doesn't actually exist. And this one in particular is really in a league of its own. This thing looks like something you'd see being played with on Star Trek if the cast of Star Trek were all the Muppets. Uh, if you're gonna do that, just for your own head cannon, save you some time. Diana Troy's mum is Miss Piggy. And if you call it there, the word I used was thing, because is the fuzzies even a game or is it just a toy? An interesting question of semantics to which I can only reply, <laughs> Contained within this beaker of joy, you will find a number of fuzzy things. We'll just live in the cup like this. You will also find this plastic plinth that they live on, secreted inside of which you'll find a deck of circular cards, a tiny, dinky, very adorable rule book, and a set of plastic tweezers. Now in a game like this, you might even think, do I need to read the manual? Surely it's just Jenga, but with little weird fuzzy balls. That's what I thought, and I'll tell you what, I was wrong, dead wrong. There aren't many rules to this game at all, it's very simple, but the rules elegantly combine to create a game that is way more interesting than it has any right to be. So the card on the top is the colour of fuzzy that we're going to have to move, in this case blue. But before I do any of the moving and touching stuff, I can, if I wish, rotate the plinth as much or as little as I like to have a look at the fuzzy situation and choose which one I might like to move. After I've started though, using the tweezers or my fingers to pick and prod at these little fuzzy things, the tower is locked and so is your bottom. <laughs> There's no moving that one. Yeah, you can lean as much as you like, but you can't get off your chair. You have to stay exactly where you are. It's a minor detail, but it makes a big difference. And now at this point, towel locked, bottom locked, you can touch and prod and poke as many of these as you like to find the one that you want to move. And if any of the fuzzies fall from the tower while you're doing this as an unintended consequence, then I'm afraid that you will have to face the responsibility for that. And this is the first way that this game is not like Jenga at all. That game is superb, don't get me wrong, not hating on the big J, but it's not really a competition. It's more of an exercise in optimistic sabotage. I can do something terrible that fundamentally damages the whole structure of the tower, but there's a good chance I won't have to deal with the consequences of that. It's your go now. Good luck. And Jenga gets away with this and it works because damn, son, that game is weighty. Did you know that Jenga is made of actual pieces of wood? That's a bona fide certified board game fact. Because Jenga is a heavy, solid, hefty thing, you get out of jail after a risky move by having to then, of course, place it somewhere on the top. And because of the weight, chances are at that point, that's when it's all gonna come crashing down. But it creates this wonderful pinch point where somebody has to temporarily take partial responsibility for what they've just done and everyone else is watching, waiting, ready to pounce and go, way as it all falls over. Maybe that's just what we do in Britain. We make that noise when anything happens, including breaking plates, um, breaking glasses, basically everything going wrong. Way Now Jenga's wobbly arc 
from precariousness to super precariousness to ha 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 is 100% killer. But the big difference with the fuzzies is this is not a solid, weighty, hefty thing. This is a marshmallowy, light, strange thing that you have to approach from an entirely different angle and has an entirely different arc. Because you only ever have to take something off and then put it on somewhere higher than it was before, you've got options and it's not really as frightening. The stakes are far lower on a turn by turn basis. And really it's a reversal. Putting stuff on top is generally quite easy, whilst pulling stuff out can prove trickier. But again, generally speaking, until the game really heats up, fairly low stakes compared to Jenga. And initially the whole flow of this feels pretty chill. And the fact that the stakes are far lower and there's much less drama in just having to put something higher than it was before. But these tweezers, right? Well, this is where the game design for me starts to get really quite clever. This represents not just the tool for moving these things around. No, 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 no. This is the conch of responsibility. I hand it to you and now you are Lord of the Fuzzies and whatever happens in your domain is your problem. As soon as you accept these tweezers from another player, anything that happens to the tower is on you. And that's a system that is not fair, but by gosh, it is concrete solid and it just works. And secondly, the clever thing here is the fact that when anything falls off the tower, the game isn't necessarily over. You still have to place the fuzzy that you were supposed to place, but after that, you just forget about the other ones that fell off, put them back, into the jug of shame. It's not called that, but apparently that's what my brain has just decided it's called. And carry on. You don't have to face the consequences for your mistake. Yet. Because, oh no, for each fuzzy that fell off of the tower up to a maximum of three, you're going to draw cards and then flip them over. And on your next turn, you're going to have to add some forfeits to your standard fuzzy action. After that though, it's the next person's turn. And maybe, maybe you'll get away with it. You will never get away with it. I know what you've done. Shut up. You aren't real. On your next turn, you're going to carry on as normal. In this case, I have to move a yellow fuzzy, but I now have to do so with three different forfeits. Uh, Non-dominant hand, that's my left has to become the highest part of the tower, all right? And I have to use my index and middle finger. Oh gosh. All right, okay, so let's give this a go. Oh gosh. And it has to be the highest point of the tower. Oh. 360 no scope, <laughs> baby! I legit wondered if I was just going to knock the whole thing over whilst doing this shot, but I didn't. Yeah. And after you've finished taking that turn and placed that fuzzy using those forfeits, those forfeits just disappear and go away forever and you are free. In the manual, it explains that the only time it's not okay is if 10 or more fuzzies fall off the tower at the same time. That will be the end of the game. Brilliantly, in the manual, it just says, you will know it when you see it, which is true. You do and you will. That's, that's okay. That's okay, it's just a couple. That's, that's not okay. That's not okay. If we're looking at this just as a toy, it already has some limited appeal. Obviously, it's weird and gorgeous to look at, and we talk about it being great to just be out and about in a pub or at someone's house and just set up a game quickly, see if anyone fancies a go. Well, this game, obviously, you can set up so quickly that you could basically do so while a friend was looking out of the window and then convince them that you didn't put it there. It must have been aliens. But what about parties? I hear you scream in a guttural roar. Well, sorry to add Big Billy Boring to the call, but uh, I don't know if this is a great party game. Mainly because I don't know if you really want to get these things wet. I actually don't know if you want to get these things wet. I don't know what happens when you get them wet. Okay, specimen A. Squirty damp. 
Specimen B, drippy damp. Specimen C, dip damp. Oh, it's a sinker. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think you want to get these wet. I mean, I'm sure they're dry and that, but... Ugh. I don't, I don't think you want to get these wet. Ugh, no. Ugh. Ugh. I don't think you want to get these things all wet and sticky. And listen, I'm not one of these people who's very fussy about having beverages and food around tables. Look at me here with my fancy lemon drink. It was a multi-pack. I'm not a Tory. I once infamously served up a large bowl of sharing soup in the middle of a game of Imperial Assault. A move so audaciously chaotic evil that even Darth Vader himself probably wouldn't be down to get dipping. And yet, I don't want this getting sticky and dirty. Look at it, it's bright, it's colorful. I don't want it being sullied with the dirt of the world. But these joyful things are deeply impish entities that can and will go everywhere. If you've got wooden floors in your home, then trust me, as soon as they go off the edge of the table, they will be underneath every single piece of furniture that you own and or uh, have sucked up all of the dust within about a two meter radius. At which point you scrabble around and you get them all back and your clean and futuristic Star Trek dream is gone and Kermit looks like he needs a wash and maybe a shave. More importantly though, in my general crusade against parties and fun, the game this has most in common with isn't Jenga. I think it's Operation. Because the cool thing is, if you keep playing this game and you get good at it, games no longer end because somebody pulled out a fuzzy that was integral to the structure, because frankly, the structure doesn't have any kind of integrity from about two minutes into the game. No, the games start to end simply because somebody on their turn applies literally any kind of pressure at all to the tower. It's like you are a ghost decorating a cake that is made out of feathers. It's an absurd atrocity that doesn't agree with physics and should probably be destroyed. And it's this increasingly absurd lack of real structure that gives the arc of each game of the fuzzies so much life. Which areas of the tower are safe to pick from? Do you want to tactically take something off very low on the tower in order to just place it very slightly higher in an easy to grab position so you can grab that again in the future? Or is another player going to tactically rotate the tower and steal that easy to grab fuzzy before you can use it. Is it safe to rotate the tower? Rotating the tower early in the game just is the kind of like a freebie. Have a look at what you've got. It gets to a point where it's really not safe to do so. And choosing to do that is a pretty chunky risk. Even better than that, if you're playing this as a head-to-head -head game, which I very much recommend, you can purposefully leave fuzzies dangling on the back of the tower so tenuously that you know if anyone tries to move the tower, it's gonna fall off. And yet because they can't get up out of their seat, there's no way they can know that. You can plant traps. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're evil. You'll never get away with it. Shh, stop it, shut up. I will. So in much the same way that the shape of this thing evolves naturally as you collaboratively build it, the strategies and tactics you come up with kind of pop out in the same way. And I love the delayed punishment system of this game of going, all right, you messed up, don't worry about it, forget about it. But your next turn is gonna be hellish. You're gonna to have to do this. Just stew on that for a minute. We'll come back to you in a second. When you start a turn with some of these forfeits in front of you, you are more likely to lose the game. Yes, which in itself is cool, fair. But also, more interestingly, you're more likely to just mess up a little bit again. Maybe you'll place it on the top, but then you'll knock off another one or two in the process. Which means you get rid of those forfeits and you draw up some more. Now this is a horrid, wonderful little loop that my brain automatically labelled as fuzzy debt. And even if you end up losing the game, clawing yourself out of fuzzy debt and having a turn where nothing falls and you get rid of all of your forfeits and you've got a clean slate and you can move on from all of those terrible decisions and mistakes that you've made, that feels wonderful. 
and in the game. You will never move on. We will find you, and we will make you pay for what you have done. And that's The Fuzzies, a surprisingly compelling game, not really as a party game, I don't think, but actually something quite quiet and contemplative and enjoyable to share. It's a bit like competitive bonsai with alien peas. As games go on, they become a lovely shared landscape that as both players, you know quite well. It's the silliest looking thing I've ever had in front of me in which you can look across the table at the other player and unironically say, a fine move. Also, it turns out that apparently in Germany, it's called Die Nofis, which makes me irrationally and unbelievably happy. Die Nofis! Hey! The new Die Nofis are here, Hans! No offense if you're German. I love German language. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Germany is great. That is the fuzzies. It is a wonderful thing. It's an odd recommendation in the fact that it is not what it looks like. I don't think it's a fabulous party game. I think it's a fabulous thing to talk about and put on a table and enjoy and look at for a few minutes. But actually, if you want to get the most out of this, this is a gentle Sunday afternoon of contemplation for two or three players to carefully sit there and enjoy. I mean, obviously there's no limit to how many people you could play with potentially, but you need to all be able to reach it fairly. So unless you've got a tiny, tiny table and tiny, tiny friends, you're probably looking at max five six. Five six, max. Report him for duty. That feels like a good time to end this video. Thank you very much for watching it, and do enjoy some of our other wares. They are all free. Do not put them in your mouth. Don't. <laughs>